All rise, we will leave. Please be seated. Will the court officer please announce the session? The International Criminal Court is now in session. L'audience de la Cour Penale Internationale est ouverte. Thank you. We are assembled today to witness the swearing in of the new Deputy Prosecutors of the Court, Mr. Mame Mandie Nyang and Madame Nashat Shaman Han. As required by the Court's founding treaty, Rome status, they will make his solemn undertaking an open court. On behalf of my colleagues that are here with me today, and on my own behalf, I offer Mr. Nyang and Madame Han a warm welcome to this session. I also welcome the presence in the courtroom of Vice President of the Assembly of State Parties, Her Excellency Katarina Sequenceva, the Prosecutor of the Court, Mr. Karim Khan, as well as Deputy Prosecutor, Jim Stewart, the Register of the Court, Mr. Peter Lewis, and the President of the ICC Bar Association, Madame Jennifer Naori. Finally, I welcome all members of the public following this session, either in the public gallery or via webcast. Excellencies, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the solemn undertaking of an elected official is always a special occasion in the life of the International Criminal Court. It is so for the institution which welcomes the arrival of a new senior official who will give their contribution to shaping the court's future course. And it is so for the person taking the oath who embarks on a major new part of their professional career. A term of nine years, which applies to the judges, the prosecutor, and the deputy prosecutors alike, requires nothing short of the fullest possible commitment. The person arriving to the ICC must quickly adapt and apply the previous experience and knowledge to the ICC's Swiss generous legal system and to the court's unique mandate. In that context, I am very pleased to note that Mr. Nyang and Madame Han, who both are highly experienced criminal lawyers with a wealth of relevant experience from the national systems as well as from the international environment, I have no doubt that they possess all the requisite capabilities to fully cope with the important responsibilities that await them. A solemn undertaking ceremony at the ICC usually also coincides with the departure of an elected official who has reached the end of the term. And this is the case today as well. As we welcome Mr. Nyang and Madame Han to the court, we bid farewell to Mr. Jem Stewart, who has served for the least for the le least nine years as deputy prosecutor. On behalf of the court, I thank Mr. Stewart for all his hard work and extensive contribution to the institution. Excellencies, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, even 
if Mr. Nyang and Madame Han will be serving the court strictly in the personal capacity rather than representatives of the countries. I cannot help but note that they both come from state parties that were among the first to join the Rome Statute. Senegal was the very first country in the world to ratify the status on the 2nd of February 1999. Fiji was the fifth country to do so and the first of the Asia-Pacific group of states in November the same year. As such, both countries helped to lead the way for the Rome Statute's entry into force on the 1st of July 2022, the 20th anniversary of which we are marking this year. The commitment, support and cooperation of states is needed as much as ever as the court faces a heavy and highly demanding workload in a challenging international environment. The court is independent at, and it is distinct from states and the assembly of state parties, but we all have an indispensable role to play within the system of international criminal justice in order to pursue to the noble goals of the Rome Statute, to put and end the impunity for the gravest crimes under international law, to provide redress to victims, and to help prevent <coughs> future atrocities. On that note, I give the floor to the Vice President of the Assembly of State Parties to address us. Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to be here today to represent the President of the Assembly of State Parties, Ms. Silvia Fernandez de Gourmendi, at today's solemn undertaking ceremony of the new Deputy Prosecutors, Ms. Nazat Chamin Khan of Fiji and Mr. Mame Mandaye Nyang of Senegal. On behalf of the Assembly, I welcome the arrival at the court of Ms. Khan and Mr. Nyang and the robust support they will bring to the institution. Ms. Khan and Mr. Nyang have extensive experience in international criminal justice and I'm confident that they will quickly assert themselves in their responsibilities within the office of the prosecutor and, of, and be of great assistance to Mr. Karim Khan, particularly during the ongoing and demanding review process of the court and the Rome Statute system. On behalf of all states parties, I'd like to convey to Ms. Khan and Mr. Niang my best wishes for the next nine years in their functions. This is a demanding job which requires teamwork, dec decisiveness, and long-term vision. Ms. Khan and Mr. Niang, your vast experience and qualifications, as well as your suitability for the position, have led states parties to elect you. You will enrich the work of the Office of the Prosecutor and the Court, not only through your dynamism imbued with experience of working on several continents and within the framework of different legal traditions, but also through the relentless pursuit of, your, of our common objective to end impunity for the most serious crimes of concern to the international community. I would also like to thank all those who have declared themselves ready to serve the court as deputy prosecutor, and in particular those who were shortlisted and who were subject to in-depth consideration by the state's parties. Your contribution to the process has been essential and I wish you all the success in your careers. I would like to conclude with some words addressed to the departing deputy prosecutor, Mr. James Stewart. Deputy Prosecutor Stewart, your dedication and leadership during the last nine years have been instrumental both to the Office of the Prosecutor and the Court, not only with respect to the challenging pressures of the of, that the Office constantly faces, but also during the last few years with the additional difficulties of working in the midst of world pandemic, attacks on the Court and the Office of the Prosecutor in particular, 
and the complexities and exigencies of the ongoing review process. Your excellent support to the state's parties is much appreciated. On behalf of the Assembly of State's Parties and the President of the Assembly, I wish to thank you for your continued commitment and resilience during these challenging times. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. We will now proceed with the solemn undertaking in accordance with Article 45 of the Rome Statute before taking up his or her duties, a deputy prosecutor of the court shall make a solemn undertaking an open court to exercise his or her function impartially and conscientiously. I invite the Vice President of the Assembly of State Parties to come forward to witness the undertaking of Mr. Mame Mandye Nyang, and I invite the Register of the Court to assist the Vice President of the Assembly. Mr. Nyang, I invite you to proceed forward. Mr. Mame Mandaya Niang, you have been elected Deputy Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court of the Assembly of the State's Parties. I ask you to raise your right hand and in accordance with Article 4 to 5 of the Rome Statute and Rule 51B of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, pledge your solemn undertaking. Moi, I solemnly declare that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as a Deputy Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously, and that I will respect the confidentiality of investigations and prosecutions. Dated the 7th of March. Uh, the 7th, first. Congratulations, Mr. Thank you. Deputy Prosecutor. Thank you. Madam, la vice Madam Vice President of the Assembly of States Parties, Her Excellency Ambassador, Ambassador Katarina Sequensova, Honorable Judge Piotr Hofmansky, President of the International Criminal Court, Honorable Judges, Mr. Prosecutor Diris Karim Khan, Prosecutor uh, Deputy Monsieur Prosecutor, Monsieur Registrar, Madam Representative of the Bar Monsieur at the International Criminal Court, Madam, la Madam Deputy Prosecutor, Monsieur dear Nazat Shamim Khan, dear guests, colleagues and Le friends, the oath that I've just taken solemn. is a solid, solemn moment. I have sacrificed to exercise it with gratitude and humility. I am aware that it's an honor to serve the first, the only permanent international criminal court which, both in terms of the number of states of which it is constituted and its relationship with the United Nations Security Council, has all the attributes of universality. My gratitude goes firstly to the Assembly of States Parties for my election 
But this election was only possible because you, Mr. Prosecutor Khan, deemed my profile worthy enough to be brought to the attention of the member states, for which I am grateful to you. This ceremony marks the starting point of a new stage in my career. I embrace it with enthusiasm. At this very moment, my thoughts go to my parents, to my late father, who was already so proud to see me wearing the magistrate's robe more than 30 years ago, to my mother, who, at 96 years old, is still wary of the brittleness of human judgment and advises me, as she did at the beginning of my career, to be extremely cautious because she said we have an attribute of God in our functions. To my dear wife, Nde Fatu, Mrs. Nyang, who is present here and whose love and intelligence enlighten my days and my thoughts. And to my four daughters, Khadija, Fama, Suzanne and Lobe, whose mere existence is enough to give meaning to my own. This ceremony today is a reminder of the necessary permanence of international law in the repression of crimes. Much has been said recently about the challenges facing the court, particularly with its new leadership. In addition to the management challenges, there are new uncertainties looming in the Horn of Africa, but also within Europe. This Europe, which we thought had been cured of the demons of war, despite the painful episode in the Balkans, which was quickly put down to a badly solved liability or debt of the Cold War, but this that seems to haunt us once again. Beyond the words of the oath, a sacred formula, I would like to express, Mr. Prosecutor Khan, my commitment to you and to my colleague Nazat Khan for the triumph of our common ideals. I was not here on the 16th of June 2021, Mr. Prosecutor, but the echo of your voice has resonated strongly with me as you convincingly reminded this august assembly of the priestly character of our functions within this court. Mr. Prosecutor, I agree with you. I share your vision based on recognized leadership focused and effective on effective action and aimed at performance within a harmonious working environment. I will fully play my part in the realization of the crucial mandate of the Office of the Prosecutor. I will do so with all due respect and deference to the judges in good cooperation with the registry and in full courtesy with regards to the defence, the legal representatives of victims and all other judicial actors. To all the staff, I express my availability to cooperate and collaborate in order to carry out our missions. This court, our court, is an irreplaceable instrument for the promotion of peace and security of nations. No effort is too great to achieve the objectives of the Rome Statute. Citizen of the world, I am also the son of an Africa which is still ravaged by wars and other mass crimes. I am firmly committed to this approach. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Nyang.
I now invite the Vice President of the Assembly of State Parties to come forward to witness the undertaking of Madame Nasrat Shemen Han. And I again invite the Registrar of the Court to assist the Vice President of the Assembly. Madame Nazat Semen Khan, I invite you to proceed. Ms. Nazat Shamin Khan, you have been elected Deputy Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court by the Assembly of States Parties. I ask you to raise your right hand and in accordance with Article 45 of the Rome Statute and Rule 51B of the Rules of Procedures and Evidence, pledge your solemn undertaking. I, Nazat Shamim Khan, solemnly undertake that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as Deputy Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously, and that I will respect the confidentiality of investigations and prosecutions. I invite Deputy Prosecutor Nazat Khamen Khan to address us. Please, you have the floor. Your Honours, the Vice President, the Excellencies, members of the Bureau of the Assembly of States Parties, the Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, colleagues. In the traditional greeting of Fiji, Bula Vinaka. Today is a day of great importance, not just for me, but also for the people of Fiji and of the Pacific region. For the last eight years, I have served as permanent representative of Fiji to the United Nations in Geneva and as Fiji's ambassador to Switzerland. The focus of the mission of Fiji has been human rights and strengthening multilateralism for small island states and for the Pacific region in Geneva. In the Human Rights Council, at which I was honored to serve as president in 2021, I participated in conversations which stressed the need for building a global community based on the values of human dignity, respect, equality, and accountability for human rights violations. I believe that despite the differing views amongst countries on the role and the focus of the Council, there has always been a shared determination to ensure the relevance of the Council. If we do not strengthen multilateral institutions and dialogue based on respect for humanity, then our future generations will judge us harshly. I am proud today to take the position of a Deputy Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court because I believe that the same values underpin this court. The belief in accountability through a code of international criminal law, the emphasis on complementarity, which seeks to strengthen national judicial institutions, thereby ensuring the eradication of gaps created by national laws and practices in relation to crimes against humanity, and the amalgamation of different legal systems in the practice of criminal law here at the ICC, in my view, represent the strengths of multilateralism, of the values we all hold dear, and our determination that those responsible for the worst crimes against humanity should be held to account for them. I have served previously in my own country as a prosecutor and as a judge. But I have never embarked on such an important journey as I embark on today. I look forward to working with the teams at the Office of the Prosecutor, with my colleague and fellow Deputy Prosecutor, Mr. Mandai Niang, and under the leadership of the Chief Prosecutor, Mr. Karim A. A. Khan, QC. I am honored to serve as a member of such a strong and experienced team and I undertake 
to serve the office of the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court with diligence and integrity. I commit to treating all those I work with with equality, respect and dignity. I thank my family, especially my parents, my children, Sifat and Kizar Hayat Khan, my husband, Aslam Khan, who is here today, the CDA of the Geneva Mission of Fiji, Mr. Anare Lewaningila, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Fiji, and the community of Pacific Island countries, all of whom share with me today the honor of today's ceremony. Thank you, and as we say in Fiji, vinaka vakale. Thank you very much. Before we conclude, I give the floor to the prosecutor, Mr. Karim Khan, to make remarks. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Madam Vice President, Your Excellency Ambassador uh, Katerina uh, Sankitsova, Mr. President uh, Peter, uh, Judge Peter Hofmansky, Mr. Registrar uh, Peter Lewis, uh, dear James Stewart, Deputy Prosecutor, um, outgoing Deputy Prosecutor, uh, dear Nazat Shimim Khan uh, and uh, Deputy Prosecutor Niang, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, families that are present. Uh, this actually is a very somber occasion, but it's also a moving one, because what I think we've seen already is the humanity that the two Deputy Prosecutors bring to the table. And this is something they share with the outgoing Deputy Prosecutor, uh, James Stewart. It cannot be underestimated. It cannot be uh, sidelined. Intellectual prowess by itself, cleverness in the courtroom, is not sufficient in any area of law, and particularly this area of law. It has to be wedded to some fundamental principles of decency, and I think uh, we have that in the two new deputies sworn in today. I, I would really like to uh, thank also the Assembly of State Parties for the trust they showed in electing and authorizing two deputy prosecutors after an interregnum of a significant period of time. Uh, I think the challenges that face the court require two deputies. It's a great testament to James Stewart uh, that he managed to juggle so much for so long. But I think the, uh, the new reorganization that we have now embarked upon will certainly benefit from the two uh, deputies. Uh, I do apologize, I didn't also um, uh, acknowledge um, the president of the ICCBA, so forgive me, uh, Jennifer uh, Nori, for, for that oversight. Nazat Shimim Khan has broken every glass ceiling there is. The first female director of public prosecutors, uh, prosecutions of Fiji, the first female um, high court judge in Fiji, an ambassador for many years, and the first Fijian president of the Human Rights Council. Uh, she's also the first elected official in the office of the prosecutor from the Asia Pacific region. Deputy Prosecutor Niang similarly has broken ground before. A very well respected prosecutor in Senegal. He has also worked for years in the past in the Rwandan tribunal uh, upon which he served as a judge uh, with distinction for quite some time. Uh, and I think uh, I join uh, the Vice President. Uh, those that are willing to put their name in the hat and apply for elected office deserve a great deal of commendation. It can be a vicious and difficult world in which every decision can be second-guessed, every decision can be improved upon from the comfort of armchairs, and yet decisions have to be taken. And I think we are exceptionally lucky, and I am extremely profoundly grateful that you have both uh, allowed yourselves uh, to uh, accept uh, this uh, election. Uh, this ceremony comes at a time of renewal uh, of the office at large, and I think what Nazat Shimim Khan, Deputy Prosecutor Nazat Shimim, mentioned 
about the workplace culture is an important one. And we've discussed that um, um, in the office, we've discussed that with the independent expert report, and it's an important part of where we're trying to go. Their appointment as deputy prosecutors also deals with the need, because we have a prosecutor from, uh, from Europe, we have uh, a deputy prosecutor, Francophonie civil law from Africa, uh, and we have a, a female deputy prosecutor from the Asia Pacific region. This is important not because of cosmetics, but because, as I said on the 16th of June, this law that we apply, that your honours decide upon, is the joint property of humanity. It's not uh, the property of, of the Netherlands or Europe. It is something that must bind all peoples from all hemispheres together. And getting the perspectives, getting the experiences of people uh, from as wide a part of the world as possible is un unquantifiably uh, important uh, in my view. We are at a, a critical moment. Deputy Prosecutor Niang touched upon it. Uh, I, again, on the 16th of June, said something along the lines of my belief that this court can help um, fulfill a promise that tomorrow can be better than yesterday. Uh, I believe that, but it is a bleak moment. Around the world, we see, whether it is in Myanmar, whether it is in uh, different parts of Asia, Africa, or in Europe, a very fragile state of international affairs. I think it was Virgil that said that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. We have to be vigilant collectively, not just lawyers and judges, not only diplomats and states and regional organizations, but really every man and woman, not to be a spectator, but to realize we all have a role in trying to make this world a little bit more human and definitely a lot less brutal than it is at the moment. It's not going to be easy, but this court and what it represents is an important step to build towards a day when the rule of law can be stronger than it is today, can be more effective than it is today, and can protect more, because we see that there are far too many in very desperate need of protection. People simply should not have to be as terrified, as scared of tomorrow, no, in fact, even of the present, whether they're in shelters, in subways, whether they're, whether they're in refugee camps on the borders of different parts of the world, whether in Europe or in Cox's Bazaar, we have to realize this current state of affairs is a terrible indictment on humanity. And we have an important, small, but an important role to play collectively as an international institution to try to move beyond the words of heartache towards proper accountability that can affect change. On behalf of uh, James Stewart, Deputy Prosecutor, on behalf of the office, uh, I give a really warm welcome uh, to the Deputy Prosecutors uh, for their um, commencement of their terms. But it's only right to really pay testament to James Stewart as the outgoing Deputy Prosecutor. I I've known, I've had the pr pleasure of knowing James for a long time. He was uh, my senior, he remains my senior and my better for, for many years. Uh, when I was in the ICTY, uh, he was the Chief of Prosecutions. And whether I've been for the defense, whether I've represented victims, uh, or whether I've uh, been working in the transition period, one thing I can say is that I'm really exceptionally grateful for the constant courtesy, for the constant kindness, and the elegance with which you have approached every encounter. I think that is a, a wonderful testament to you. I know you and Charity are going to remain close to The Hague, and I know your contribution uh, James, to international justice uh, is only getting started. Um, uh, with, with that, Mr. President, um, we have to go back, all of us, to the real work of this court, and I look forward to working with the deputy prosecutors 
with the rest of the office and play our part uh, under the Rome Statute. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Prosecutor. The solemn undertaking of two deputy prosecutors of the International Criminal Court has been by been concluded in accordance with Article 45 of the Rome Statute. On behalf of the Court, I offer heartfelt congratulations to Mr. Yang and Mr. Khan. I am sure my colleagues, also not present in the Court today, join me in wishing you both the best of success in your new role here at the ICC in the service of international criminal justice. This session is by conclude. All right, we will leave.